Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Tuesday the 7th of February. Now, there's a public health emergency going on in most of our countries. For example, in the United States, over 11% of the whole population is diabetic. In the UK, it's just over 7% of the whole population is diabetic. And this is associated with so many disease processes. People are much more likely to die earlier, much more likely to get heart failure, renal failure, cardiac uh, cardiac problems like uh, myocardial myocardial infarction so many risks associated with this diabetic blindness all sorts of problems and the evidence is now in as far as i can see on the protective effects of vitamin d it's not being done because it's dirt cheap and big pharma can't make any money out of it so it's not being pushed but i'm going to give a meta analysis this morning that shows a 76% level of protection between higher levels of vitamin D and lower levels of vitamin D. So stick with this because this is a really quite huge international import. And it's not not just in the Western countries, this is all over the world. India is terrible for diabetes, for example. First paper I'm going to look at is this one, uh, Annals of Internal Medicine, uh, Diabetes and Risk for Type 2. uh, So basically this is people with uh, pre-diabetes people that are going to develop diabetes in the next few years. How can we stop them developing diabetes? So um, references there as always. It's quite nice, this one, actually, although uh, unacceptably uh, this paper is paywalled, uh, the Annals of Internal Medicine do provide a nice summary for uh, people, uh, well, for, for anyone to read, sort of plain language summary, which, of course, is always good. Um Vitamin D has many functions in the body, including a role in insulin secretion and glucose metabolism. So insulin, of course, is the hormone produced by the pancreas that lowers blood sugar levels. Now, observational studies have shown an association between low vitamin D levels and increased risk for developing diabetes. So if we look at lots of people, we find that the people with the uh, lower vitamin D levels uh, develop more diabetes. But of course, this is a correlation. Is it causal? And that's what this study does. It actually looks at three interventional studies where vitamin D was actually given and the benefit was actually observed. So this is an an interventional study. It takes takes it from observation, which is a correlation, which may or may not be related, to actually demonstrating that, no, if we do improve vitamin D levels, the amount of diabetes does go down. So it's interventional. That's why this is so important. So does giving vitamin D uh, to people who are at risk of diabetes reduce the risk? Looked at three databases, data going up to the 9th of December 2022, so pretty up to date. Compared the use of vitamin D versus placebo, which of course is classic technique, uh, classic interventional double-blind technique uh, in in adults with pre-diabetes people that are going to develop diabetes, often described as a a sort of a glucose intolerance. These people won't be diabetic now, but without intervention, they will be pretty soon. A meta-analysis of pooled data now. It's it's, um, a three-year follow-up. So that's good. And the vitamin D group, the new onset of diabetes was in 22.7% of patients. The placebo group, it was at 25%. Now, it doesn't sound like a big difference, but that translates into a 15% reduction when you look at the, uh, the figures. So given the huge number of the, the tens of millions of people with diabetes, this is absolutely huge. 15% reduction, but it actually gets better than that. Uh, numbers needed to treat to prevent one case of diabetes is 30. So this means if we give uh, 30 people with tre- pre-diabetes the increased amounts of vitamin D, if we give them that as a supplement... 30 people treated will prevent one case of diabetes. Now, that might not sound sound like much either, but we've been looking at data recently for the the autumn boosters, for example, for the uh, COVID mRNA vaccines, and we found that you need some some cases, tens of thousands, and and younger, fitter people, hundreds of thousands, (laughs) need to be treated to prevent one hospitalisation. So uh, 30 as a number needed to treat is actually quite excellent, especially as this is the study found this to be safe, especially as it's dirt cheap. Vitamin D can be bought from the supermarket for essentially nothing, and we could make it a lot cheaper than that and give it out if we wanted to, if the political will was there. Political will is not there, of course, because um, politicians seem to be interested in uh, making money. 
and there's no money in vitamin D because, of course, it's out of patent. Uh, reduced uh, risk reduction by blood level. So people who had at least um, 125 nanomoles per litre, and that's the same as uh, greater than 50 nanograms per mil, uh, compared to 50 to 74 nine moles per litre so this is the higher group with higher levels this is the lower group with uh, lower levels uh cholecalciferol that's the vitamin d3 reduce the risk for diabetes by 76 percent hazard ratio 0.24 76 percent reduction this is absolutely huge 76 percent reduction for a simple cheap safe intervention or is as, as much as we can use the word safe it, it's, a, it's this study certainly found it to be safe very few people will have difficulties uh, taking vitamin d of course i have to tell you to go to your doctor first um before taking anything don't take anything on my recommendations there are a few people people with sarcoidosis for example that can't take uh, vitamin d but it is very rare most of us are deficient most of the time in winters in the northern hemisphere um, three-year absolute redu risk reduction of 18.1%. So this is the absolute risk reduction. This is absolutely incredible, looking at the whole population. So the 76%, um, this 76% uh, reduction was for people with prediabetes. The absolute risk reduction for the whole population is 18.1%. This is a massive benefit. Why is this not being done? I believe it's negligent of the medical authorities not to do this. Because we have an absolute epidemic, pandemics of, of, of uh, diabetes. Now, the dose used, uh, one study used 20,000 units of uh, vitamin D3 a week, uh, cholecalciferol per week, 20,000 units a week. And uh, one study used 4,000 units a day. Now, personally, I take 4,000 units a day. That's 100, same as 100 micrograms of uh, vitamin D. That's what I take personally. And I also take 100 micrograms of uh, K2 with it because the K2 sequesters the calcium released by the vitamin D and puts it into the bones and takes it out of the tissues. So that's what I'm taking personally. Can't tell you what to take, but that's what I'm taking uh, personally, 4,000 units a day. Um, now, uh, an another study took a 0.75 micrograms of a, a synthetic one but basically these are the sort of figures that we are looking at 4,000 units actually 4,000 units a day is not that high um, of course it should be titrated on an individual basis but most doctors in the UK won't do vitamin D levels unfortunately mine won't unfortunately uh, so we're left to guess that's why I guess that the best amount is probably four to eight thousand for me but because I'm a bit conservative and I don't know I just take 4,000 if I was able to get the blood, my blood levels tested, as I should be able to, but I can't, but if we could, then we could titrate that up or down a little bit. I suspect I would need to titrate it up a bit, but of course I don't know because I can't see my blood. We need tests. Um, I think if we want to spend money effectively on a public health intervention, we should be testing the whole population for vitamin D levels. That would be a really cost-effective intervention, whereas other mass, massive public health interventions that are going on at the moment are less cost effective in my view adverse reactions um so they look for kidney stones high blood calcium uh how high calcium in the euro in the euro and they didn't find it they didn't draw any definitive conclusions about safety because the numbers were so low so they didn't get an increase in kidney stones they didn't get an increase in this is high per this is calcium in the blood and they didn't get an increase in calcium in the urine which is good. There are implications in adults with pre-diabetes. Vitamin D was effective in lowering the risk for developing diabetes. Um, the case is, in my, in my opinion, made. Now, why is this important? Let's look at data here from the Centers for Disease Control in the States. So one in five people with diabetes don't know they have it. Let's look at the figures here. Uh, this is by the numbers, CDC. We're not great fans of the CDC, of course, but we assume they can collect diabetes numbers. Uh, this is from uh, total diabetes from uh, 2001 to 2020. 
Diabetes increased significantly amongst over 18s. At the moment, 37.3 million people have diabetes. Absolutely incredible. 11% of the US population. Absolutely incredible. Now, um, normally over 90% of these would be uh, diabetes mellitus type 2. Uh, DM1, diabetes mellitus type 1, uh, that is the... uh, normally comes on when you're younger that's caused by a disorder of the pancreas with insulin deficiency whereas diabetes type 2 used to be called maturity onset but sadly a lot of people are getting it now and it's the diabetes type 2 that we're talking about so um 37 million people with diabetes 28.7 people have been diagnosed 8.5 million have diabetes have not been diagnosed and in this 8.5 million people in the states um, they are developing pathology every day as a result of the chronic hyperglycemia. In a country like the United States, this is simply not acceptable. 8.5 million of your citizens have diabetes and don't know it. We'll see the UK is not a lot better in a minute. Um, total pre-diabetes, 96 million people. So we can reduce that by 18%. Well, heck, that's going to be about 15 million cases over the three-year period. And presumably over the next three years, it'll be another 15 million cases prevented. Uh, The economic costs, uh, 327 billion. This was in 2017. Um, Absolutely incredible. Um, For the individuals concerned, $9,601 per year. And of course, some people simply do not have this money. Massive economic costs. Now, this, the UK is not a lot better, a bit better, but not a lot. These are the figures from Diabetic Diabetes at UK. Uh, let's look at those in a bit of detail now uh, as well. Um, UK uh, prevalence of diabetes, 4.8 million. That's 7% of the population. Still quite incredible. Uh, 3.9 million diagnosed. 1 million don't know they have it. So 1 million people in this clever sophisticated the united kingdom have diabetes it's damaging their organs it's damaging their heart vessels it's damaging their kidneys it's damaging their eyes it's damaging their peripheral circulation and they don't even know they have it because no one's bothered to look this is quite uh, ridiculous uh, we should have public health screening for blood sugar levels and we should have public health screening for vitamin d levels um, but it's lacking as far as these one million people are concerned and this is so 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 simple you just do a finger prick to test for sugar i mean okay it's better to do blood levels for hba1c for glycosylated hemoglobin Um, but it's a simple blood test why is this not being done Um, it's a real failure of primary health care in the uk don't we care about our people or something what is what's going on here quite annoying really um, it's going to go up to 5.3 million people by 2025. People with type 2 diabetes, 50% more likely to die prematurely, two and a half times more likely to develop heart failure, horrible disease, heart failure. People with heart failure suffer terribly, horrible disease. Twice as more likely to have a heart attack, that's a myocardial infarction, an MI. Twice as likely to have one of those factors. Now, Diabetes UK do stress obesity as the main factor. But of course, vitamin D deficiency is more prevalent in people that are obese because vitamin D is fat soluble. It absorbs into the fatty tissues. So when you give an obese person some vitamin D, it doesn't go into the blood. It goes into the fatty tissues. So they're way more short of vitamin D. You you have to supplement them with higher doses for longer to get the vitamin D levels up in the blood. But we're eating too many sugars, we're eating too many carbohydrates, we're eating too many processed foods. We don't exercise enough and we don't get enough vitamin D or correctable. But the vitamin D one is just correctable with a few tablets. Obesity is hard work. Cutting down on sugars is, is a bit more complicated. Carbohydrates is a bit more complicated. Processed foods are just everywhere and are cheap, unfortunately. Um, we need to eat a lot more fruit and uh, vegetables, especially a wide variety of plants and 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 more 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 fat containing food as long as it's not processed fats um but the vitamin d one it would be easy test the levels give a simple supplement and we would eradicate that variable and presumably reduce the risk by 76 percent 
with an absolute risk reduction for the whole population of over 18%. This is absolutely huge. And in my view, it's a scandal that it's not being done. So there we go. In my view, it's now definitive. Intervening to give vitamin D supplements reduces the development of type 2 diabetes over a three-year period. Thank you for watching.